Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I wanted to share with you how you can replace the sky in your videos. This can be a really valuable technique if you're shooting on different days and the sky looks different and you kind of want it to be a little bit more consistent, or if the sky in your video just doesn't look very exciting and you'd like to replace it. So we're going to be going from a look like this to a result like this. Alright, so let's just hop in here. If we go to File, New, and VFX, that'll add a new VFX scene. I'm going to open my movie clip with the button up here, and here it is. Basically, all we really need to do with this is just track two points, and we'll use that for our stabilization. So if you haven't ever been in the tracker before, that's not a big deal. We can just zoom in on a point that's kind of high contrast, so maybe this little logo here on this car. If you hold down control and hit the left mouse button, that will set up a tracker. And if we go down to track here, we can just track it forward. And we ran out of footage here, so I'm going to back it up one and go playback, set end frame. There we go. There's the full footage tracked. Very nice. So that's one tracker. Let's do another one over here. This is a good spot, looks like. And once again, um, just hit that backwards button because I was in the middle of the footage. But if we go forwards, that'll just track right through the footage. Usually the first time tracking, it's a little bit slow just because it's putting all the frames in the cache. But the second time will be a lot faster. If you want to see how these tracks are doing with stability, you can hit L and that will lock your view to a certain track. And if we look here, this is doing pretty well, sticking to the point where it needs to be. Now just dropping in some tracks won't do us much good if we don't actually enable the stabilization. So if we go over here into this tab, if you don't see it, you can just hit N, it'll show up there. And go to Stabilization, enable this 2D Stabilization checkbox. So first what we're going to do here is add in a track for the location. And I'm just going to select this one, doesn't really matter which one you select for location. But there we go. Then what we want to do is check this rotation checkbox. And for this, if we just select the other tracker and go plus mark there, that will use this for the location and this for the rotation. And that'll give Blender a pretty good idea of how our horizon is moving. So once we have these all set up here, we can hop into the compositor, but first let's just add a quick mask. So to add in a mask, if we go up here to where it says tracking, you can hit mask or you can just hit tab. That'll switch between the two modes. And in the masking editor, what we're going to want to do is create a mask that will cover up these really bright parts here on the ground, and it'll just leave the bright parts of the sky, which will come in handy a little bit later. And I'm just going to do it so you understand what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go Control and left mouse button, and that'll drag out this kind of handle thing here. We can do that again up here and down here over in the corner maybe up around here and another around here and once we've almost completed the circle you can just go alt c and that'll complete the circle for you so this is a pretty good mask if we go Control shift and left mouse button on one of these it'll add a bit of feathering which we probably would like and also if you go b and box select some on one side we can actually parent these to a track so i'm going to select this track and go Control p that'll parent these three there and then once again, if we go B, box select all of these over here, select this tracker here, control P. Now our mask is moving with our horizon, so we don't get any of the sky in it. We just get the lower parts here. I happen to know that we're going to need to invert this mask. So if we go over to the tab here that says mask, we can just hit this little button here. That's an invert button. And the really cool thing about the mask editor is you can just add in all these mask layers if you wish. This is a really simple mask, so we really don't need that. All right, so let's hop into the compositing now. So over here in this tab, we're just going to check Use Nodes. And I'm going to get rid of this, because who even uses that? Eventually, we'll need a Render Layers node, but we can just disconnect this for now. Move our Composite node up here, and go Shift-A, Input, Movie Clip. And for this, we're just going to use our Movie Clip. If you have Node Wrangler enabled, you can go Control and Shift and click on their Movie Clip, and that'll view it real quick. We can also drag one of these into our composite node. And with this, if you just hold down shift and right click and drag across these two, it'll put a little Y here so that we have this one long string to work with. Also, if you want to kind of scooch this backdrop around, if you have your viewer node selected, you can actually grab the edges and just scooch it around if you wish. There's also this X in the middle that you can grab it, move it around. We could put it in the corner here, but I kind of like it just in the background, so I'm going to put it there. All right, let's get working on this. So what I'm going to do first is go Shift-A and Distort, 
and I'm going to use a stabilized 2D. And if we drop that in and then add our movie clip here, you can kind of see the difference between the clips. This is the original, and this is the stabilized footage. And if you just pump this right out to the composite node, it really doesn't look very good because there's edges that are moving in and out. We're not gonna do that though. What we're gonna do is actually take this, duplicate it, put it at the end here, and invert it. That'll pretty much just not do anything because this stabilizes it and then this destabilizes it to what it used to be. But our plan of action is to put the sky in the background here in the middle so that the sky is moving the same as the footage and then we'll destabilize it so it's all moving together. And if that sounds a little crazy, well, it is a little bit crazy. That's pretty cool though. So once we've put these stabilized nodes in, we're gonna want to tell Blender where the sky is and to do that, what we're gonna do is get a converter and color ramp. I'm gonna drop this in here and I'm just gonna put my movie clip right into that color ramp and this will turn everything black and white and we're gonna play with these handles to kind of turn up the contrast in between the trees and the sky. So I'm gonna go kind of like this, bring it up quite a bit. Something like that should be pretty good. We'll start with that and then see how it works later. Another thing we're gonna to wanna to do is drop in that mask that we created earlier. So I'm gonna go input, mask, and here we can select our mask. It's just called mask at the moment. And with this, we're just gonna mix it with the color ramp so that the ground doesn't have this white part here. Cause if we leave the white part here, then the sky will just be added in there, which we really don't want. So I'm gonna go color and mix. I'm gonna set this to be multiply and I'm gonna multiply the mask with the color ramp. And that will just black out the ground there. So that's pretty good. That's what we want. Now we have a pretty good mask and a pretty good idea of where the sky is. Now we want this to be stabilized as well. So I'm just gonna grab my stabilized 2D and duplicate that, shift D, drop it in here. All right, that's pretty good. Now you might be wondering what I'm gonna do with this render layer and I'll show you. If we go out of the compositing view and just go plus, general and layout, we got this 3D scene here, and we really don't need to be too fancy with this. I'm gonna grab the camera and just go Alt-G and move it to the center. If we go Alt-R, maybe R-X-90, something like that. We're back in 3D space, that's pretty nice. Cool. All right, so our camera is all set up here. What I'm gonna do now is just drop in an HDR sky, and with that, we can get some really nice sky. So I'm going to go into the world settings here and go color, environment texture, open and find my HDRs. Whoa, that's fancy. Don't like it though. Don't like that either. Where the heck was that? All right, here's an HDR I like. If you're wondering where to get these, if you go to the website HDRI Haven, you can get them for free there. And there's a huge selection of really nicely done HDRIs there that you can pick from. But now I'm just gonna select a section of sky. I'm gonna go into my camera view with zero on the number pad and go shift F and just look for something that I like. Over here is pretty nice looking, so I'm thinking I'll pick that. We can adjust this a little bit more in a later date, but if we go back into compositing, we can take a look. If we hit F12, that will render out the background, so our render layers node will have this sky now. In between these two stabilized nodes, I'm gonna go Shift A, color, and mix, and I'm just gonna drop this render layer underneath there, and then drop this stabilized 2D, which remember is our mask, into the factor. And if we take a look at the mix shader here, we have something very interesting. You can see we definitely have the sky, but it doesn't look super good at the moment. And one way we can start to fix this is if we go into our render settings tab, down at the bottom under color management, we can set this from filmic to standard. And that actually starts to make things look pretty nice. One thing that I found really helps is to turn up the exposure for the sky. So if we go back to our layout tab and under our world properties here, just bump up the strength. I actually turned it up to about a two, so it's pretty bright. Maybe a little bit less than that. Let's see what this looks like. Aha, that's starting to match up a little bit better. Now, if you take a close look here, you can see this just black line going right through the middle of the sky. And this is really super weird over here. Don't want any of that. So if we go back into the compositing tab, right after our render layers, we're going to drop in a Shift A Distort Transform node. And with this, we can just bump up the scale a little bit maybe to 1.2. Then if we look at the end result here, hey, this guy is matched up. That's pretty nice. And really, that's all you need to do. There might be a few little artifacts around the sky. To work on those, we just go back to our color ramp node and mess with the black and white values here. The more we turn up the black, the more of the foreground we get. 
but we also kind of get a white line around everything if we do that. So it's kind of a balancing act, but I think this looks pretty good from back here. So let's just take a look. We went from this as the original, which is just kind of white and bland, to this, which is the final result. Very nice. So if you found this tutorial useful and you'd like to see more tutorials like it, there's a link in the description that says free hydraulic kit bash elements. And when you click that link, it will actually add you to my email list. And I'll make sure the first thing I send you are some hydraulic kit bash elements made for Blender users like yourself. And these are designed just to give you a little bit of a jump start when you're working on mechanical projects. Another thing to be aware of is every week when I create a tutorial, I just mail out to that list so that you'll be up to date. But other than that, I hope you have an excellent day and cheers.